Today on episode four, we have Ruben Rivetta, all-star real estate agent, um, all-star Century 21 Americana. The Rivera Group. The Rivera Group. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, a team with his wife. They're, they're killing the market. They have been for the last few years here. Um, you know, I consider them some of the rookies of the year for for our real estate industry and uh, the rookie and the vet. <laughs> oh, he's spitting for y'all on the mic. So as usual, we'll get into some background and try to talk about two of my favorite things, real estate and uh, maybe not so much marketing today, but we'll just focus on, on real estate here. Um, as usual, we have Rob. What's going on, folks? And Ruben, like I said, um, if you want to talk about a couple of your little highlights, I don't know that you accomplishments over the last couple of years. Maybe go into deeper what I don't know. So accomplishments, I mean, uh, we've been the top team in, in our in our company since since we started. And how many people are in the company? In uh, the company, there's about 200 plus, and the office Damn. just keeps growing. Damn. Damn. We have an aggressive broker, so he's constantly recruiting, trying to bring some heat in. That's what's up. So, <laughs> and there's a lot of agents right now, too, huh? <laughs> yeah, a ton of them, yeah. All right, so usually um, we start off with just getting some background on how you grew up. Uh, are you from Vegas or, you know, where are you guys from or where are you from? Where'd you... So I'm from, I grew up, well, I, I was born in San Diego. Uh, my parents moved when I was two years old. We moved to Maywood, California. Where are your parents from? Uh, they're from Sinaloa. Okay. Yeah. So we moved to Maywood. So my entire childhood was in Maywood, California. Yeah. In, in, in Los Angeles. <laughs> and then once I... We, we moved a lot during my middle school years. I uh, moved from Maywood to Southgate, and then high school year, uh, we ended up doing it here and um, ended up living here in Las Vegas. Were you a good student? Uh, on a roll. Were you? Oh, <laughs> what school did you go to? <laughs> in Maywood? Um, I went in Maywood. Uh, in Maywood, I went to uh, middle school was Nimitz. Or out here. Nimitz. Oh, out here, I went to uh, Mojave. Yeah. yeah, I'm a North Town baby. <laughs> <laughs> Did you play sports at all? I tried playing uh, baseball, but the program they had there, it wasn't so good. Oh, was, yeah. Uh, yeah, growing up, that's what I played. I played baseball. So it was something that I kind of did since I was a little kid. I was pretty good at it. And then here, it's, it's, it's hard to get motivated when the yeah. when the there's really no future there, you know? You hear that, Vegas? Yeah. Coaches. Yeah, step coaches. Game step, up. Up. step it up. Step it up, dude. Mojave, step your game up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look at that camera right there, Mojave. <laughs> Yeah, so, the you. Uh, <laughs> when did you, what, what age did you say you came to Vegas? I was 13. You were 13. 13. So freshman. So my last quarter of middle school, we moved here and then right away jumped into high school. Yeah. yeah. Did you find that it was hard to, like, did you get in a lot of fights or because... I don't know. I heard some people saying how they used to hate on a lot of people from Cali over here. From and Cali, blah, blah, blah. I, I think it was a good thing. I think the everybody liked everybody it. Everybody clicked up. Or yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really have any problems, and then, and then as far as like what I what you kind of grow up with, you don't want to be around it. Yeah. I guess. Uh, so it was a good thing once I moved here. Everybody kind of accepted the fact that I was the, the kid from LA. <laughs> so I think it kind of helped me. It helped me. It was. It was never. The, it was never just the. Ca it was certain Cali. You yeah, know, probably like certain, California, certain Californians yeah. that used to come out here. Don't say it like we just, it was just prejudiced against Cali folks. I'm mad at <laughs> Cali still for coming in. And, and yeah, but coming for the most part, I just focused in school, so. Yeah. yeah. Um, How about you guys? You guys are from Vegas? I'm from Phoenix. Phoenix? I, I came out here when I was 25 or 26. Mm-hmm. But I played, I played in band, I played in sports, I skated. I was a little bit of everywhere. You led, you led with band, <laughs> you, you played like, sports? I, my mom you, made me what did you play band. Uh, uh, football, and football, football and basketball. Football and basketball. Your mom didn't Mostly basketball. You. Oh, yeah. And what instrument did you play? <laughs> Saxophone. Saxophone? That's dope. Till, uh, till I was dope. like a freshman in high school, or maybe a sophomore in high mm. school. I thought you were going to say the flute. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I, that's what I was thinking the whole time. Like the kid with the recorder in elementary school. I was a well-rounded, a well-rounded individual. I was, like, this guy, I was like, this guy looks like a flute guy. Was, <laughs> the recorder. <laughs> oh, How about man. you? I'm born and raised out here. Out here? Yeah, I'm born and raised out here. Any sports? Everything. Football, boxing, track, wrestling. Kind of what led me into where I'm at now. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see the wrestling. Yeah. Stay strong. Yeah, man. Wrestling yeah. was wrestling was fun for me. I, I don't think if we talk about that all the time, that wrestling was just that sport that it, it changes you. Mm -hmm. 
you know your grinder if you're yeah, wrestling because there's just, a lot of discipline right yeah mm -hmm. get to a whole different level when you get in the mat I, I feel like anybody that i that i meet that's that's in good shape and very disciplined they they have a, at one point in time wrestling background <laughs> yeah they do. The, yeah, the UFC champs always have a good strong a good strong in wrestling. wrestling. Yeah, because it's always those like you got to you know you got to go the extra mile when you're a wrestler. Mm -hmm. It all ties in kind of to to what what you end up doing anyways. Yeah, just the work ethic wise. Correct. So what led you to the real estate path? How did you guys? How did you find? Well, first of all, it's you and your wife that are a team, right? Correct. And that's how you guys have really been mm -hmm. killing the market. Um, what what led you guys into that? So for me, before I, I got into real estate, I had a, an insurance office. So I did that for four years. What what attracted you to be, because those are both high entrepreneurial, <clears throat> like a real estate office mm -hmm. too. I mean, an insur you said insurance, right? Insurance, yeah. That's a high, you know what I mean? Entrepreneurial mm -hmm. type job too. Mm -hmm. What led you onto that? So personally for me, what kind of led me uh, in that route? At, at that time, uh, it's, I, I got out of high school. So I got out of high school I'm in college, and you really don't know what. Yeah, you're do. I had that you know, problem. You don't know what too, you're yeah. gonna do. You're kind of confused at that point. Um, but something that I've always, uh, well, that my mom jokes around about myself is that I'm very curious. So I'm always constantly seeing like, who's this guy or that guy? What's he doing to have that car That's or to have that house to live in that neighborhood? Yeah. And at that time, my mom was taking care of. Um, Cause I wanted to be a, a, a doctor growing up. I mean, you're, yeah, you want to be a doctor. Yeah, those are good. Those so, are high aspirations. I wasn't like that. I wasn't I like was, I'm gonna be a either. doctor. Yeah, <laughs> I was the opposite. I'm like I'm, I'm gonna go play pro. I'm gonna go play pro somewhere. So during that time, my mom's taking care of uh, some kids from from this this owner of of a medical center, mm -hmm. and I thought they were doctors. So I remember that I would see them pull up in their Mercedes. That, I mean, we didn't grow. That's that was like our exposure. That's that's the rich guy right. that I yeah. saw growing up, right? Mm -hmm. I saw the the Mercedes S550. I saw their big house, their nice pool, and I I tell my mom, I tell her, hey, it, it must be nice to be a doctor, you know? Like I can't wait. And I was like, they're not doctors. I'm like, what do you mean they're not doctors? Like they own the clinics, so they're they're business people. And at that point, I think it kind of like shifted. You the just way remember I think. that too. You were like, I, rem oh, I remember exactly where I'm at in the car with my mom. Crazy. And and she tells me that it's like they're not doctors, because my understanding is that you have to be a doctor to have the clinics, to have mm -hmm. the hospitals, right? Mm -hmm. This guy, she's like, no, they employ the doctors. So you were like, oh, shit. and I like think if I, I pay the doctor. I'm the <laughs> boss. Like, oh so shit. I think at that that point, I started my mind shifted to more of business. Yeah. That's where, where we kind of, where I kind of wanted to go towards the business route in my life. That's interesting. And the funny thing is that my grandpa was a business owner, right? So he had a shop growing up, but I don't know why I never kind of saw it as like, that, you know, yeah. like I didn't, he had the nice cars, the nice house. Oh yeah? Whatever. Yeah. We, everybody would go hang out with him. What kind of shop was it? A body shop. Okay. So probably because I always saw him like with normal clothes. Right. And, um, his hands are dirty. Hands dirty. Hands yeah. dirty. Yeah. So the whole time, I never really saw that. I never really saw him as a as a, like a business person. That what you would think is a business person. And, and damn sometimes right, people aren't. There's yeah. business people, dude. Well, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. I think it's Hell the yeah. picture that's painted for us because you know when we grow up, be mm -hmm. alone. I said that woke out a little. Be a doctor. Mm -hmm. Doctor. You know, be something in that in that atmosphere or area mm -hmm. to where. We don't look at it like that so we don't see everybody else is actually doing stuff like that too. correct so you're kind of you're kind of uh trained to see somebody on a suit and you're like okay well this guy has money yeah. or this guy has yeah you know, this guy. Right. yeah and and it's funny because i did grow up with that so i could say that my entire life my my grandpa <laughs> could have been my you know your <laughs> aspiration <laughs> that's a <laughs> random insurance guy <laughs> was like, oh shit and now that's I have how this, it works and i have this random guy <laughs> 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 with, the, <laughs> with the mercedes and whatnot so i, I think that's that's where i kind of had that shift yeah uh, where, where i was like okay well business is where i want to be that's cool and so that was one of them then the second one is this guy that i would see buying a lot of houses but how did you know he was buying houses though? He was in your neighborhood and he'd always be like pulling, oh, boo, 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 boo. Cause I, I had a, I had a, so I was friends with the, with the uh, girl that mm. was, so that she was the brother. Mm. It was her brother. So okay, I would okay, see him okay. constantly buying houses, buying houses. Was he flipper or he was, was he? Flip, he, I think he held, held a few of them. Yeah? yeah. For the most part, they were out there flipping. And 
there I kind of started questioning, well, how do I make this much money That's like, to be able to do, do that? This? Yeah. yeah. And he did insurance. So he was an insurance agent. <laughs> <laughs> you had asked him or were you asking so them? I, I, I went to his office. I went to his office. I was, I think How I was like you? Okay. 17, 18. Okay. So you're like really figuring it out. Yeah, too. 17, okay, 18. Okay. Yeah, because I graduated when I was 17. Oh, you did? Turning 17 that summer. And I went to his office and I started talking to the guy. And he tells me... Um, he, yeah, he told me, he's like, I do, I do insurance, this and that. Um, this is where you go and get licensed. You could go ahead and apply and become an agent. And at that time, I'm thinking, okay, cool, I'll, I'll go and become an agent. But you have to start from the bottom, right? You have to, yeah. you have to go become the assistant yeah. and you start growing and then from there. So I went and got licensed. And sure enough, the um, I went on Craigslist. And on Craigslist, there's a ton of ads for for insurance agents, and <laughs> and I applied I applied to you become just... an agent. So we went through the whole interviewing process. The district manager interviewed me, and they were gonna hire me. And then the guy calls me. He's like, "Hey, well, you know what? I, I, we think you're too young." <laughs> <laughs> they didn't realize how young you were at first. <laughs> Damn. I think we're too young. You're gonna have to go ahead and start and. Um, and go and uh, work as an, like an assistant. Uh, yeah. So I was like, okay, cool, I'll take it. I, I, I'll, I'll go and I'll work. So for, for the most part, I stayed there. But my end goal was always, you know what, how do I make more money Function to be able to do the all real that? Yeah. yeah. So I think that's that's kind of it was always my it was, journey, you know? In the back of your mind, like, okay, it's mm -hmm. eventually going to lead to this. because Eventually, yeah. So it's it, I, I feel like that's where we're just having faith. Yeah. And, and your journey, uh, just kind of trusting the path that you're in, yeah. that everything will work out at that point. You probably learned some good so, stuff in insurance, too. What do you mean? I learned, I learned everything I know. You got to hold it. <laughs> <laughs> we had a little kid in disruption. It's okay. Pause. <laughs> break. You got to keep that in, bro. It's all natural. <laughs> I, I don't see nothing wrong with it. All of us are parents. <laughs> Anybody that comes on the podcast is... And yeah, we're all parents. <laughs> well, I, 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 <laughs> I can't bring mine. I got a troop. I got like half a soccer team. Yeah, I had him right here with the formula. I know, right? <laughs> Every, they're all at different ages. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, uh, too, wh where were we at? Just understanding uh, home insurance, just being in that industry, too, you probably learned... I mean, not just home insurance, but insurance. You probably learned a little bit about... Insurance. So I was fortunate enough to work for a, a big company. Mm -hmm. and so they're a Fortune 500 company. And their training was it's, pretty. It's very good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I feel like a lot of my foundation, I got it from there. And then how'd you talk your wife into being your partner? So she talked me. Yeah. <laughs> but she's like, hey, I think, I think. Was she the real estate agent <laughs> she, first? She had became that an net? agent first. So same thing. Damn, so that's cool. So yeah. same thing for her. For the for me, it was during um, during high school. For her, when she graduated from college. So she had mm. graduated from college, got her degree, and then she kind of hit that point where you're confused. You're like, well, yeah. now what? Yeah, exactly. And I guess for her, um, she always had that in her mind. We're like, right. well, I want to become a real estate agent. And so, so she she wanted to become a real estate agent, but she also wanted to be like get into like uh, mm. a cop and oh yeah, yeah, she oh, wanted to get she... in law enforcement for real. Yeah. Dang. Yes. Yeah, so, and and funny thing is that at that time Metro wasn't hiring, <laughs> so she's like, like let me just they weren't hiring. So, so she's like, okay, well, like I've always kind of wanted to do real estate. She went and did her license, got got license. So it wasn't even a money thing and for then, her. It was just a drive thing for her too. Myra's weird, dude. <laughs> Myra's weird. I, I, I don't, I, for her, I don't. I don't I don't think she cares about money. That's cool. That's really, but that's that, cool that, though. That's, that's just the overall experience though, man. Cause it just sounds like you guys were just grind. It, it was, mm -hmm. it was about the True. knowledge and then mm -hmm. getting to that next level. Yeah. So it's, I, I feel like it's, it, it is getting to the next level. And then you get to a point in your life where your life demands more from you. Your mm -hmm. clients demand more from you. Your yeah. kids demand more from yeah. you. You're so, right. So <laughs> you're we, exactly have, right. we just have to keep getting better. Yeah, you're exactly. And even when mm -hmm. if you feel like you can't figure it out, you're gonna mm -hmm. figure it out. You have to. Yeah. You have. You don't have a choice, especially if you have some kids. I know, right? <laughs> yeah. They're expensive, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> I think I think my wife describes it the best. It's like having a broke best friend because they always want to go out. <laughs> yeah, they always want money. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, bro. And David, but David Buster's isn't making it easier. <laughs> 
all everything's closed down now. Yeah, all, everything's opening back up. Mm-hmm. But yeah. now everything is just gonna be in the party in the room. We turned like their little, you know, their little room into the little club now. They mm-hmm. have all sorts of shit in there now. Yeah, <laughs> Light. we did too. <laughs> we did. They're crazy. Um, shoot, let's talk a little bit about real estate in the industry right now. It's at a historic level. It's at historic um, competition. Historic lows for inventory. What, what, um, maybe on a buyer's side, you know, working with some of my buyers, sometimes we feel losing out on a couple of offers, you know, Mm -hmm. what are you seeing in the market right now that might be able to help people, might be able to just be able to help people understand what they might experience? So the real estate market right now is booming. It's crazy, right? It's crazy. It's It's the best market that we've seen ever. I mean, I've only been in business for five and a half years. Or almost six years now. Well, you're like a numbers guy, you know what I mean? You mm-hmm. you look at, you study the numbers, you look at the past mm-hmm. sometimes too. So I, I'm always looking at the at the history yeah. of, of um, data points. Of data stuff, points, right? data, yeah. Um, so just based off what I'm seeing, I'm seeing that this is this is uh, the best year in real estate in the past ten years. I mean, I I, I wish volume I wise too, them. right? Volume just the wise, amount volume too. Wise, uh, the price point for the property, so the average sales price is even higher than it was the last time that the, the economy tanked. Mm-hmm. Uh, sales are way higher than that that time. Um, so I feel like right now the market is great for sellers, right. and at the same time it's great for buyers because they're 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 able to qualify for a lot more because of how low the interest rates are than they would if the rates were to be a bit higher. Because some buyers right now are saying, okay, well. This is- crazy competition right Mm -hmm. the home prices are raising we might get beat out a few times by all cash cali you know Mm -hmm. cali people are coming here with all cash right um next year right maybe i'll wait till next year what's it gonna look like next year the problem with with waiting i mean if if you're gonna go into the market to live in a property i feel like you have to you have to create a plan as as far as what you plan to what you intend to get from from the market Mm -hmm. or what are your plans going into a house Mm -hmm. if you're going into a house to live in the property it's 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 a good time to buy if you wait longer uh let's say rates go up that's the only so if rates go up then the client's going to qualify for less Mm -hmm. less money uh that the so they're going to get less money from the from the mortgage uh lenders yeah once they get that that interest rate higher and they qualify for less, let's say the, the prices of the homes don't go down. They're still- Then it, it'll be even less inventory for you as a, as a, as a buyer, mm-hmm. because you're not gonna have that pool to pick from compared to as right now. And I feel like that's why it's such a huge demand right now for buyers where they don't wanna miss out on the opportunity to get these low rates. Everybody's and, getting approved for like 300,000 mm-hmm. FHA, you know, approved loans. And then you have to think about it. Uh, for the most part, a lot of people were scared. For a long time yeah uh they're still jaded of, from 2008 yeah, the 2009 experience. yeah a lot of them had to fix their, their credit well, and everybody thinks oh this is a bubble just like oh, yeah 08 09 mm-hmm. like everything is the same you know it's mm-hmm. a bubble it's a bubble mm-hmm. is it a bubble or is it just <laughs> different <laughs> completely different things going on at, at some point uh like personally for me since i have been in it for a long time that's probably the most the, everybody always tells me the market's gonna crash. That's what every- since I started, the market's gonna crash. The market's gonna <laughs> crash. The market's gonna crash. And I feel like it's it's stopped me from doing certain things that I did want to do, certain mm-hmm. investments, because you do kind of yeah. buy into that, and then you get into that fear where where you're like, okay, well maybe I should be a little bit more careful. Maybe I should be a little bit more careful. Mm-hmm. But I think that's where it becomes important for you as a consumer, as a buyer, uh, to really understand what your goals are going into a property. And what 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 you what you plan on doing with that property? Yeah. So if you're seeing it as a buyer, as a home buyer, whether you buy the house or not, you have to rent. Right, so right. It's either going to be going back in your pocket or mm-hmm. back in somebody else's pocket, mm-hmm. which isn't building you any equity at all. Correct. So if if the if the property goes down twenty thousand, but then it goes back up in five more years to what you bought it at and the mortgage rate is high now mm-hmm. did it re- did it really matter that you <laughs> that the, did it really matter to you as a, as a homeowner that the value of the property went down when you had no intentions on moving True, in yeah. the first place so you bought the home for stability because you wanted to have your kid go to a certain school mm-hmm. you wanted to live in a certain neighborhood uh, so if if that if that uh, cons- if that buyer 
sees that as, okay, well, this is my primary residence. I'm going to live in it. It doesn't really matter what happens as long as you can make that payment. Mm -hmm. Because even if you can't, if, if, even if you don't buy that house, you're going to go rent somewhere and pay anyways. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Where you're not building anything for yeah, yourself and then, either. And then the, uh, yeah, so if you're building, let's say you buy the house, you, it, let's say it does go up. So now you have some equity. Yeah, exactly. And at the same time, you're paying into a house that's yours. So should buyers look at it as more of an investment instead of a purchase? Because I, like when I've talked to mm -hmm. friends that have bought houses and stuff like that, mm -hmm. or even when I've talked to Alex, I feel like most people look at it as like, hey, I'm just going to live here. But the thing is, like you said, either way, they're going to have to rent. And to me, renting or leasing or any of that is mm -hmm. still debt. I still got to pay it off the it's next month. Debt, right? Yeah, it's all mm -hmm. debt. And, uh, and and another thing, when you rent, <clears throat> if well, right now it's it's different because of COVID or whatnot. Yeah. So uh, a landlord can't really kick you out of the property. That's another thing. It's kind <laughs> of messing stuff up mm -hmm. a little bit. Yeah. So let's say all this goes away and you're renting a, a home. If you're renting a property, the landlord will kick you out in 30 days if you miss a payment. Mm -hmm. If if you own a property and the home has equity, the banks are willing to negotiate with you with that equity yeah. for you to stay in your property longer until you get back on your feet. So it's a completely different position, power so position. So you're, you're in a whole different position. And I feel like it's it's very important to have home ownership because in a way you do create wealth over time. Mm -hmm. and, and simply because of that, because of, of the equity that you're building on the property. It's such a big asset. And it's yeah. forced savings. It is forced savings. So it's chess, not checkers, mm -hmm. is what I'm understanding. It's the long term. Yeah, yeah. compared to if you're if you're a tenant and you're renting, you're just burning money. So debt. There's been, there's some benefits to renting. If you're not gonna be here for more, you know, mm -hmm. for long term. Mm -hmm. Correct. But uh, if, if, if your interest is to buy a house, then it's, it's, it's a good time to buy. And, and that's where you have to get serious about what your goals are and what your plans are. Because if, if, if you're planning on doing investments, then you have to think of the market a whole different way. If you're, if you're thinking of buying a home for as a primary residence, then you're approaching it as that, as your home, where it doesn't matter what happens in the next five, 10 years, you plan on staying there. As a, as a, okay, now, now for the seller side of things, right? Mm -hmm. We're kind of mostly talking about buyers. Maybe as a seller, you know, is it a good time to list? Well, yeah, it's a good time to list. Mm -hmm. How do you, you know, what are your strategies when you're listing a home? How do you navigate the multiple offers that are coming in? So with multiple, when on the selling side, if you're a seller, it, again, <laughs> you're sitting pretty. <laughs> you're just it's, waiting for. It's the best time to sell. How many offers are you getting the first three days? If the property, average? if the property is priced right, you're gonna get about. 10, 15 offers. Jeez. And they're paying, how, and, and out of those 10 or 15 offers, you're usually going with one that's, so let's just say it's a $300, $300 house, $300,000 house. Yeah. Like $300 house. $300. Yeah. I'll buy it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good deal. Yeah. That's nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's a lamb. It's Stewart. Yeah. Oh, that's a lamb. It's Stewart. You're like, it's nothing. I'll take it. Oh man! What um? What was I going with that? Even if you put it at three hundred, I, I guarantee you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. the bidding war is gonna bring it up to three hundred. Well, that's thousand. what I was gonna say too. Is what what <laughs> offer are you taking? Like one that says three twenty five, right? Or three thirty sometimes, three ten. I mean, you have to come in with an offer that's it's it, appropriate. Yeah. So if if I'm representing the seller, it's it's they're gonna love me right now. They're gonna love you if you if you list right. your house because the market is so hot there's such a huge demand and a huge pool of buyers coming into the city that they're just fighting for whatever property comes in the market especially if it's a property that's in good condition and oh, yeah. as far as the offers go a, a client's going to get 10 15 offers so it's our job to present all offers mm -hmm. i mean we try to break it down as best as possible for the client so that they see their bottom line and at the end of the day that's all the seller cares about is their bottom line yeah it, it doesn't matter if you come call them, tell them, hey, <laughs> so and so is my I've house. got a great family here. Yeah, so <laughs> it, it, unfortunately, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter because the seller is seeing in a way we're taking away the emotional part of it for them. Yeah, because let's say the buyer goes directly to the seller then it's an emotional transaction in a way we, we kind of step in the middle where the client is is, is making a, a better more informed decision as far as what they're going to make out of that out of that property and just how the market is buyers are willing to offer more yeah there's a ton of of buyers coming from out of state with cash that are willing to pay more so 
sometimes a seller might get lucky where they do get an offer higher than what the comps are even saying for the property. Right. Just because of, yeah, just because of, of comparable, of, the comps are the comparables, mm -hmm. or recent sales that have happened in that mm -hmm. area that are close to that house. Especially if the property is in very, in very good condition. If a seller goes and lists it, let's say 20,000 over. Well, even sometimes over. those appraisers come back good too when you're yeah but if you get a cash over. offer there's no appraisal yeah mm -hmm. and that's oh, where you really? get beat out yeah. a lot is is mm -hmm. on that's these correct. cash offers yeah, so if from... you get a cash offer then there's no appraisal but the seller has to be careful if they are going to overprice because if they overprice and they accept a financed uh purchase a financed buyer there's going to be an appraisal right so once the appraisal comes in it's going to then... it's going to be based off that unless they waived mm -hmm. all that too which and is even crazy. Some people it, are waiving that now. Even if too. they waive it, so let's say they waive it, and uh, the buyer doesn't have the money to pay over the appraised, appraised yep. amount. So then the buyer would they would cancel the transaction, and now you have to sell the house twice. Yeah. But um, just how the market is, you're gonna get another buyer. <laughs> yeah. So what homework should a, a buyer do before looking into the market? Because I feel like a lot of people don't know what they should do or how they should go about it before they start looking in the market because so everybody just calls them. random people before they start looking so for the most part i feel like uh your client is going to be a referral a referral client uh they're going to go with somebody that they trust mm -hmm. that person's going to tell them hey well uh alex is a good a good agent i'll go ahead and work uh, you can go ahead and work with him so then you get that that referral uh so you're the primary contact mm -hmm. when it comes to to that buyer so as a real estate professional it's your job to be well informed on what the market is and what the steps are moving forward to help the, the client purchase a property. And it's important that that the realtor understands that the uh, the client it, the client's goals. So it goes back to their goals, their plan. Yeah. Where, what are their needs? What do they want to do? What are they trying to accomplish? So then you know exactly how to advise that client moving oh, no, forward. Okay. Where, where, where you figure out, okay, does this client need down payment? Do they need closing costs or are they even competitive enough to be in this market? Right. Um, I think one of the things that, that you and Myra have been able to do is break into the luxury uh, listings as well, mm -hmm. too. Um, do you care to maybe share some some uh, advice or resources to other agents on cold calling or whatever? You know, some of your kind of taxes were a year or two before you really started to, you know, mm -hmm break into that market or whatever it may be mm -hmm. um any type of advice to maybe just get more listings too so getting into uh, a better price point i feel you can't ignore anybody yeah you can't ignore it because your your smallest deal might be your biggest uh, right, huh? deal at some point and i feel like it's important to always take care of your client and we kind of go back to the body shop and the yeah so you kind of the insurance agent the insurance the agent guys. So you see, okay, this guy probably doesn't have money, and this one does, but you don't really You're exactly know right. Stop mm -hmm. reading a book by its cover, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so a lot of times you're over here focused, okay, well, I'm going to go here because this yeah. is where it's at. But at the same time, you have to really uh, take care of every single client that comes your way be because fun. anything could happen in life. And, they, and most likely the referral right like that person might that refer you to mm -hmm. somebody who mm -hmm. is an investor or wants to maybe just become start becoming an mm -hmm. investor or whatever it may be like let's say it's somebody that works at uh let's say somebody works at your gym right somebody works at your gym um they want to buy a house that client that client has a close relationship to you as the as the owner if if i don't treat him well what are the chances of me getting a referral from him when you tell him that you want to buy. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Just take care of your people. It goes hand in hand so with it's, 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 it's just Yeah. It just kind of goes. Just take take care of your of your clients. Um, at the same time, it's, it it also goes back to the same thing. Certain clients are going to demand a certain level of professionalism. Yeah. So we could always wish and pray and <laughs> whatnot, but let's say we do get that opportunity, and we're not prepared. Yep. You're right. You have you have to be prepared. Yeah, you're exactly right. So it, it's it's a it's it's definitely a journey, as uh, where you have to grow as an individual. You have to grow as a professional. You really have to understand your market, because you know, especially if you start going into 
as somebody that's a sophisticated investor, right? They understand money. They know how to talk. They understand their investments. Yeah. So if you don't really know what you're doing, then no matter what, you're not going to get that client. That kind of goes back to what you were saying. Do your homework. Yeah. On some of your other shows, do your homework. Do as your much homework. Know your industry as mm -hmm. much as possible. And sales in general, right? Know your product mm -hmm. better than anybody else, too. You have to. And you'll feel confident when you're, when you're speaking mm -hmm. to it as well, too. I feel like knowledge is confidence. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, exactly. can, tell, you right. can definitely tell the difference when mm -hmm. somebody knows their market and who they're, who they're targeting mm -hmm. as to opposed to somebody just winging it. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Um, do you have any other questions? Uh, what you know, you started at a young age where mm -hmm. you saw where you wanted to go. Yeah. So the reason that me and Alex kind of push the show so much is because we want to have young minorities that have that one day wanting to be an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. What do you? What do you? What would you recommend to them on what steps to take or how for them to go about it? Who? What should they look for? For me personally, I would say uh, control your environment. Yeah, that's control, that's, your, control that's, your environment. That's a good one. Uh, control the people that you uh, look Surround up to. With. Oh yeah. Control um, the people that you will be around uh, because a lot there's certain people that that throughout so throughout your path there's a lot of people that you're gonna not click with anymore. It's not so much that, that right. you don't, that you don't like them or or. It's just a circle. It's, the circle gets smaller. The circle gets smaller. So it's, as you go, it, it's going to keep demanding more from you, mm -hmm. and you have to grow as an individual. Uh, so you you have to be prepared for that. Another thing is evolving. If, yeah. If somebody charges you for for advice, they're not really invested in giving you advice. They're invested on you paying them money. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. So and and I feel like as a minority we tend to fall into those paths where where we feel like this person has our interests but they really don't you know they just they're just trying to eat up your money mm -hmm. or we we can't even multi-level marketing companies right um <laughs> what's the first thing they tell you stop uh don't get an education drop out of college go and um you'll, you'll retire here at 26 27. Um, dream. <laughs> so I, I feel like if anybody tells you not to educate yourself they're trying to brainwash you yeah so you have to look out for for people like that yeah because those and, are like those are like one in a million shots too yeah it's, and, and, mm -hmm. and i don't think a lot of people pick up on that when well, mm -hmm. education really helps you think differently too mm -hmm. and it helps you build a different type of world it uh, opens mm -hmm. yeah it opens yeah so I, I think you have to to be willing to do your research um and and definitely control your environment i like that definitely one. control your environment because I, I, growing up you're a little naive mm -hmm. uh you don't really see the bad in anybody or in anything or so. you want to be a badass like you mm -hmm. know what i mean you're trying to go that path too yeah so, <laughs> or you're trying to be a badass and then if you want to be a badass then that's your environment you're good <laughs> you're gonna get caught up <laughs> and that's another thing you have to switch your mindset as to what a badass really is yeah and and just the uh the impact that you could do on your family uh your household your parents your kids their kids the generations yeah if if you really stick to it and yeah. and and find a good mentor mm -hmm. somebody that really that i really think that's a, that's a you. good point is is finding a mentor too or not being able you know just not being too proud to ask for help or just you assuming for help. you know and mm -hmm. breaking generational curses because i feel mm -hmm. like you know we're sitting at the table but we did something that a lot of our parents struggled to do which was mm -hmm. be their own mm -hmm. and for us to be able to you know entrepreneurship that's that's always been the point of us getting to the next level and i, I think right now a lot of um i i realize that a lot about our generation of of like friends that i talk to uh they're they're scared because of the of the traumas they have from what their parents went through mm -hmm. but their parents didn't speak english mm -hmm. they weren't making half the money that we're making yeah uh so and and even then we still feel like we're at a position where where we might fail at what we're trying to do or mm -hmm. or where we're not ready to go and buy a house and yeah. because we're, we're i think we're stuck on seeing our parents struggle that we don't realize that we are in a way better position than they were yeah definitely and and that's that's also something that you kind of have to embrace where you are in a better position that like you do have more opportunities 
we speak the language you know the that, systems that, you know the systems we really don't have any excuses yeah you're and, right and if and if anything's kind of holding us the back, work ethics there you know if, yeah. if anything's holding you back it's it's mainly going to be you it's it's like it's your mindset it's a little bit cultural right you just have to be able to change the culture a little bit too it's put hard yourself out it's, there. it's hard to really imagine that you could have a, a huge house when you grow up in a little one yeah I th- I, my grandma used to yell at me all the time. You're from here. You know the language. Mm-hmm. And it didn't click until I got older because I was like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you're eight years old. They're telling you, like, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to go play with my, my toys. Yeah, you, but- you, you really have to want it and you really have to believe that yeah. you want it yeah. and that you can make you know, accomplish it. But that's for me, that's that's something that's, that's that, that always kind of, like, is important to me where kind of reaching out to minorities, like, giving them that exposure where, you know what, like, you could do more like there is more out there mm-hmm. and and just recently i had a client uh, uh we sold them a house because you don't really never know who you're influencing right yeah, yeah you're right um so i was showing him a house getting uh showing them houses and then i switched it where i send one of my agents to start showing them houses so the agent goes and shows houses and then we go to signing and whatnot and the the dad he tells me he's like he he was wondering where you were at like if you weren't our agent anymore like he he was asking for you to be there um and 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 it kind of brought back to me where that that kid's that curious kid like me right You're right yeah I like so and we were at the signing table and he's like what do you guys do like what do you work like what do you do <laughs> <laughs> you're like providing <laughs> full circle oh, you're like, oh, shit. you should have gave he's me like, your card flip, here bro it flip. <laughs> call me in 10 years no, when you're ready I, I got him a book so i'm gonna give him a hey, book hey that's yeah. important bro but that's good that's, that's dope man because you know the kids are the kids are the ones that see it mm-hmm. the that's kids they exactly. remember it that's yeah, a good so story. You, so yeah. you never, you never know who you're influencing. 100%. And for me personally, because it's sometimes we're hard on ourselves, right? Yeah, a lot. We're, we yeah. we As want Catholics so too, much. You're hard on demand, yourself. Yeah, you're hard on yourself. Where you don't really uh, celebrate your own wins or your the small wins. Mm-hmm. And I think when that happened, then it kind of hit me where I was like, that, that's, that, that was me. That was. <laughs> that's that's important that you noticed that <laughs> yeah, too. That's yeah, good. That's, cool. that's really good. That's probably a good way to end it. So end I'm it out. Like, yeah. Look, do you have any ending words? No, man. Tell them where to find you, Ruben. Tell them how to find you. Tell them how to ask you questions. Follow me on IG, on Facebook. Uh, I'm saying in Spanish, Ruben Rivera. Uh, it's at, <laughs> <laughs> at Rivera Group Real Estate. Uh, so it's Facebook, at Rivera okay. Group uh, uh, underscore uh, real estate. Uh, my Instagram is at Rivera Ruben underscore. There you go. Uh, so, yeah, you find, you find me anywhere. Internet, look his name up. Internet. If you guys need some advice, look my name up too. If you need advice, <laughs> <laughs> plug, plug it in, plug it in, plug it in. Again, where do we find you at the gym and call you for your Coach One Rebel? You guys know what it is. Also, Rebel One Training on Instagram, uh, all that good stuff. Free Meadows Jiu Jitsu. I run all the social media platforms for the whole gym. All right. Thank you, Ruben. Appreciate sure. it. Appreciate hey, you, sir. It's been a great You're show. Poke me up. Yeah, man, let's do it. <laughs> Everybody gonna get big in here. Let's get it. Y'all like that in here next time by next year. <laughs> I'm blending in with the mic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, thank you, bro. Thank All you, right, brother. Sure. Thank you, guys.